The big Bronco is coming, but it's not here yet. So we've got the Bronco Sport here, and I'm curious if it's worth your time. I've actually driven the Badlands already, and I know that version is. It's got a great engine, great suspension setup, and that one is good to go. But this one here is the fancy Outer Banks trim with the not so fancy one and a half liter engine. And it sounds like a recipe for a vehicle you can ignore. And that is not the case. This is a Bronco Sport Outer Banks. It gets the largest wheels at 18 inch hoops, 225 60 18 series tires, and a bit more refinement on the outside. It still has the excellent looking grill and lights and still looks like a fun, capable, cute ute off-roader. And the optionally available Area 51 paint looks pretty good too. On the inside, the leather trim heated front seats are almost shockingly comfortable. And since this is an upscale trim, you have a six and a half inch touchscreen, eight way power adjusting front driver's seat, heated steering wheel, rain sensing wipers and remote start. But what matters most here today is the running gear and the engine, all that good stuff. This is not the 245 horsepower two liter EcoBoost found in the first edition in the Badlands. This is a one and a half liter three-cylinder turbocharged EcoBoost engine right here. It makes 181 horsepower, 190 pound-feet of torque, and it pairs with an eight-speed automatic gearbox. And like all Bronco Sports, no matter which trim, it comes standard with all-wheel drive. So we don't have the Haas suspension. We don't have bash plates on this one, and we're running on all-season tires. But you know what? It's still an almost shockingly capable machine. This is the Saddleback Mountain Range in Orange County, California. Its highest point is Santiago Peak, and the trail to get here is rutted, rocky switchback. There are a few spots to try out some proper wheeling too, and the Bronco Sport eats it all up. So, because it's not a Badlands, we have five GOAT modes instead of seven. And GOAT modes, for those of you who don't know, stands for goes over any terrain. Right now I have it in the sand mode, which is supposed to be the most entertaining mode, and I've turned traction control off. And there's no button that's easy to find. You actually have to go into the settings menu to turn traction control off. But there's a four-wheel drive display that shows me what the system is doing. Now, when you're just driving around town, it is mostly sending power to the front wheels, and that's better for fuel economy on a vehicle like this. As needed, it can send up to 50% of the torque to those rear wheels. On the Badlands version, it can then vector it side to side, which is probably much more helpful, but we don't have that here today. We do not have the tires that the Badland has. We do not have the ground clearance. We do not have all of that stuff. However, it's fine. I like the steering weight of the Bronco Sport. The tuning of the electronic power steering system has good heft to it. It has a little bit rubber bandy feeling to it, but that's an often complaint I have with most electronic power steering systems. So the weight of it is good, and I'm gonna live with that. And I'm not wanting for power knowing what I'm dealing with. Three cylinder turbo engine, and there's no issues here. The brakes feel good. The suspension is much more comfortable than I would have thought on a road like this. I've driven a lot of vehicles up and down this hill. The most comfortable I've ever driven up this hill is the Mercedes G-Wagon. It is unreal how comfortable that is. My daughter actually fell asleep on the drive up the hill. My own Montero is comfortable going up this, surprisingly so, but that's because it's a modified vehicle with Fox shocks and the bouncy seat, that's what they call them, the Montero family. It can be unlocked, it goes up and down, and it's surprisingly a really nice ride going up and down the hill. So the brake's good, the steering is good, the engine is nicely tuned, and then the throttle response Response in the mode I have it right now is nice so that I'm not it's not real herky-jerky it's not like if I just I just matted it and it didn't go though that could be down to 190 pound-feet of torque and less so than the throttle tuning but I'm gonna give the Ford engineers some credit there there's a sport mode there's a slippery mode there's the normal mode I believe there's even an eco mode but you know we don't need that in a Bronco Sport but like I said overall the ride on road is very comfortable and it is surprisingly comfortable off road of course the Badlands would be the better one out here it has a uh, different steering knuckles and, and different suspension. That available Haas system is great. But as it sits, this is just gives me confidence to know that any Bronco Sport off the showroom floor is good to go. Now, what I would do is probably add bigger tires to this so I could be less 
worried about where I'm putting the tires as I go up the hill. I have to pay attention to where the rocks are because these are just all seasons. These are not nice, chunky, like a KO2 or a Toyo Open Country or a Falcon Wild Peak, something along that status. But I'm not wanting for traction. I'm getting up the hill just fine. And I've actually driven this already in the Bronco Sport for a different video I did. And that day there was snow on the trail, believe it or not, because the peak gets high enough, it got cold enough, and what was rained down by me was snow at the top, and I was driving through slush and mud, and it did it fine there too. Now, the Outer Banks doesn't get the same off-road numbers as the Badlands, of course. The Outer Banks has 7.9 inches of ground clearance versus 8.8 .8 on the Badlands. The approach angle is 21.7 degrees, breakover is 18.2, and departure is 30.4. Well, the Badland gets 30.4, 20.4, and 33.1, respectively. Additionally, the Outer Banks can ford 17.7 inches of water, while the Badlands can handle 23.6 inches. So the Badlands is the trim that you want if you really want to get dirty, but any lesser trim is quite capable as it sits. And then you throw beefier rubber at it so you don't have to worry so much about where you're pointing the tires, and you have unlocked more adventure capability potential. And Ford wants you to do that, considering the automaker has hundreds of dealer available upgrades ready to go, from tents and awnings to lights and even an MTB rack that fits two 27 and a half inch bikes right in the rear of the truck. I did test it with my own 29 inch mountain bike and it did fit, it was a bit snug, but that's an XL frame. You'd only be getting one of those in there, but if it was my Bronco Sport, I'd have a hitch rack anyway. So how much does all this fun cost? A base Bronco Sport, which gets the same engine, gearbox, all-wheel drive system, and five levels of GOAT mode, starts at $28,155. Both the Outer Banks and Badlands start around $34,000. This one, as tested, is $37K. If it were my money, there's no question I would get the Badlands. The bigger engine, the available Haas setup, the bash plates underneath, that is the one I would buy, and I recommend others to buy. However, you can have tons of fun with the smaller engine and the less capable suspension or the fancier trims. This thing is pretty awesome as it sits, and all this does is make me more excited for the bigger Bronco when that eventually gets here. However, for the average person, this makes a great daily driver, weekend warrior, adventure machine. This is not a baby Bronco, this thing's legit.